that the price of oil seems to have found some stability, say, in the mid-40s, which is exactly what you'd expect, given that above $50 is where you do get a lot of supply coming on, pushing the price back down. What exactly do we make of the oil service stocks in this environment? Specifically, how about a high-tech oil service play like Core Labs, CLB? This company is commonly referred to as the scientist of the oil patch because they use their technology to analyze rock and fluids and oil reservoirs in order to help the clients figure out where to drill and how to increase production. As you might imagine, Core Labs had a tough time since the price of oil crew, uh, peaked in uh, uh, 2014. Stock is now down more than 40% from its all-time highs a little over two years ago. But the oil market has started to bounce back ever since crude bottomed at 28 bucks back in February. The company itself bottomed just before that. And since then, the stock has rallied nearly 50% 5 from its lows, putting up nearly 14% for 2016. Now, Core Labs just reported after the close they delivered a solid quarter in-line earnings, slightly higher than expected revenues, not to mention revenue guidance for the next quarter that was a bit higher than the analysts were anticipating. So let's take a closer look with David Demsher, the chairman, president, and CEO of Core Labs, find out more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Demsher, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, thanks, Jim. Our 18th time on CNBC, our 13th time on Mad Money, and we know that's a good luck number in the oil patch. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, about what you're thinking, because you're sticking by this idea that there is a V-shaped recovery happening in oil. Now, it seems like every time we get to 50, David, we then go back down. How are we going to be able to penetrate that $50 level with more companies hiring you to find more oil? Well, Jim, one of the things that happens at $50, we do have a lot of small producers, independent producers around the U.S. that are going to hedge future production. So at $50, that's a good target to get through. Once we break through there, we're probably heading up into the $60 range. So as the demand continues to increase, which we see, and we still see supply falling in the U.S., year over year, we're down now over a million barrels. We're losing month on month about 100,000 barrels of production. And by the end of the year, we could be down another five to 600,000 barrels, down from its peak of about 9.6 million barrels a day in April of 2015 to around 8 million barrels a day by the end of this year. That tightens the crude market, and that should push crude ahead of that $50 market that is such a resistance level. Okay, so let, let's, I want to try to balance that against the fact that more people are hiring you, the business is a little bit better than the previous quarter, that also Halliburton this morning said they've seen the bottom and we've seen the rig count go up. At what point do we just kind of have a self-fulfilling prophecy that more people hire Core Labs, more people f- uh, find oil, and it's just maybe we're just stuck at this level for longer than you think? Well, you got to remember, Jim, the laws of physics and thermodynamics are immutable. And the decline curve always wins and it never sleeps. So the overwhelming decline curve now in the United States is about 10%, maybe more, year over year. To overcome that, we're probably going to need to double the rig count for about a year and a half, use Core Lab technology. That should us get, it, get us back to the stabilization of oil production in the United States. So it's going to take that kind of an effort to stabilize production in the U.S. and to do that around the globe, it probably will take even a longer period of time. All right, now let's talk about uh, around the globe. You're, it might be great for people to understand. You've got a best example you had in a long time, David, in reservoir description. What you're doing deep water for Exxon, because it's pretty amazing off of uh, African coast. Yes, correct, Jim. If you look at the Liza 2 prospect that was drilled, it has now proved up between 800 million and 1.4 billion barrels recoverable. That's one of the largest discoveries in many, many years. Opposite that, on the coast of Africa, we are also working offshore Senegal on a parallel geologic structure that is also probably going to be a giant uh, oil field in the making. So those two projects probably will start supplying crude to the market some five to seven years out. And in five to seven years, we're going to need every drop of oil from those two giant oil fields in waiting. All right, that's right. The South African, South American one, Guyana, and the West African. What price do those are those profitable at, David? I mean, are they profitable right here? 
Yes, costs have come down for drilling and developing uh, these wells, Jim, and then for the infrastructure uh, top side to produce that. Some billions of dollars have been taking out. If you just look at uh, BP, the Mad Dog 2 project in the Gulf of Mexico, they've taken billions of dollars uh, of cost out of that project. That makes these projects somewhere between $50 and $60 oil very economical and gives a nice return to their shareholders. All right, how about uh, onshore? You've got a good example of, of trying to get a little more, uh, what, for Noble? Yes, uh, that is, ag no, that's also in the deep water Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. But onshore, Jim, we've got a number of projects that we're looking at enhanced oil recovery from these shale reservoirs in the U.S. We talked about this about a year and a half ago because we thought this was possible. Remember, the average recovery factor out of a U.S. shale is about 9%. Right. By injecting combinations of CO2, heavy and light hydrocarbon gases, low salinity water, and nitrogen into these rocks and cycling through to loosen up more oil and natural gas, we can get that recovery factor from about 9% to 13, 14, 15%. That does wonders for our clients in increasing their return on invested capital and the money they're spending either in the Eagleford, the Woodford, the Bakken, the Niobrara, the Scoop, and the Stack in Oklahoma. All right, David, last question. You, you did say, listen, increasing demand. What gives you a feel, uh, even with cars that are uh, using less oil every year, even with the world not growing that much, what gives you such confidence that the demand side is going to stay, they're going to get stronger and pick up? Yeah, Jim, we're mainly quoting EIA numbers there. However, if you just look at the IEA numbers here in the U.S., last week our gasoline usage per day went up to over 10 million barrels a day of gasoline usage. That's a near record high. So as America goes back to work, we're going to burn more gasoline in our cars. Led by India, China, and demand here in the U.S., we are pretty confident that that demand level stays at a pretty constant level. And right now, that's at, a, at about a plus 1.4 million barrels uh, a day year over year. Well, that would be uh, that would bring it into balance and more so. You would be absolutely right. Well, David Demsher, Chairman, President, and CEO of Core Labs, great to have you back for our thirteenth time, sir. Good to see you. Hey, Jim, always a pleasure. Thanks for having Core Lab back on Mad Money. Thank you. Okay, Core Labs is a, a company that did well throughout the trough, and I think oil, you know, it's not going back to twenty-eight. I'm not as certain as David that it's going to go right through fifty, but this is a very well-run company. Mad Money's back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.